a very old Stuart 10H part machine steam engine. A kind viewer sent me an old Stuart 10H steam engine which was part machined many years ago. In this video I am looking at the parts in detail. Check out the prices at the time on the Stuart booklet. All of the parts arrived well packed in a box with lots of bubble wrap and as I carefully opened the package, although it doesn't look like it, the first thing I saw was this small instruction booklet which shows how to build a 10V, a 10H and even a double 10. I think this engine was bought in the 1950s and never completed. I'm going to zoom in on the booklet to show you the prices. Just look at these. And number 10V or number 10H steam engine was £5.5. Five shillings. Then there was purchase tax at £1.1. One shilling. This was just for the casting sets. And the double 10, including pipe work, was £12, with £2.8 shillings purchase tax. And it gets better. For a finished engine, a number 10 or a number 10H, it was £8.10 shillings plus £1.14 shillings purchase tax. And the double 10, which now fetched quite good money, was only £15.15 15 shillings with £3.3 3 shillings purchase tax. This seems very cheap for what they are, but when you look at the average weekly wage in the 1950s, it was between five and 10 pounds, so they weren't that cheap. I found this part in the copious amount of bubble wrap in the box. I don't think this is part of the engine, or if it is, I don't know what it's for. Here are some of the parts of the kit. Right at the back is the connecting rod, complete with machined big end brasses. In front of that, the bearing material, then the eccentric strap and rod casting, and then the complete crankshaft casting which needed to be machined. And this one has been machined. I'm checking the dimensions with the micrometer and all seems to be okay. The rust is an optional extra which has occurred over the years. I can't think at the moment what the piece of bar stock is for, but I know what this is. This is the box bed base. And it's been partly machined, but still needs some fettling on the outside. Here's the main bed plate, and once again this needs a little bit of fettling, yet it's already been part machined. The trunk guide's machined, the bearings are machined, and the mounting holes have all been drilled. This part brought back some memories for me. It's a Kodak film canister. Digital cameras weren't available in the 1950s, and the film came in a canister like this. You had to carefully put it into your camera, avoiding light contamination. Then once you'd used the roll of film, you'd put it back in this canister and send it off to be developed. I don't know what these three pieces of metal are for. I think the steel part is possibly to make the eccentric sheave. Time to look at what's in the film canisters. This one contains the studs and the nuts and bolts including four very small brass machine screws for holding the cylinder cladding in place. I thought it would be a good idea to replace these in the canister. I started doing this one at a time, starting with the brass screws, but once I'd done that, I used my trusty telescopic magnet to pick up the rest of the steel parts. Then I firmly replaced the plastic cap so I wouldn't lose them. This of course is the flywheel, completely unmachined, just as it came with the kit many years ago. The quality of the casting really is very good indeed. It will take no time at all to remove the surplus material and machine this into a very respectable flywheel for a 10V, a 10H and even a double 10. It's time now to take a look at the cylinder parts. Here's the piston with the oil grooves in it. And by poking my little finger in the cylinder, I can feel that the bore is very smooth indeed. It is very well made. I was going to just add these parts to my collection of Stuart random parts, but I think I'll build it. I won't be using this though. This is a cylinder cladding, which is made from anodized steel, far better than the modern aluminium equivalent. The only problem is, this stuff over the years has not stood the test of time and rusted badly. I would have used it if it hadn't have had a great big dent in the side of it. Here, I've temporarily wrapped it around the cylinder just to show you how it fits. Here's a close-up shot so you can take a good look at the parts. 
It wouldn't take long for me to make this. I could probably do it in a day or two. Years ago, I once built a Stuart S50 in one day, and I found it really easy to do. And in those days, I didn't have to bother with the camera work, which really slows the job down. Here's a final look at the cylinder cladding before I put it in the bin. Inside the package, in a small cardboard box, were these bits. The steam chest, the steam chest cover, the slide valve, the slide valve drive block, the valve spindle, and the valve fork. Plus a 7BA hexagon bolt, I don't know why that was in there. Once again, I'll put these parts back in the little cardboard box so I don't lose them. If I do decide to finish this engine, which really won't take long, I can't do it for a while because I have a lot of work to be getting on with. If I take on too many projects at once, then I am very unhappy. I can't concentrate on the jobs, and every fibre of my being starts to not want to do it. Here are the parts, all set out on the bench, but I can't leave them like this. I'm going to put them into a food container. But looking at the size of the food container and the number of parts, it's going to be a tight squeeze. Here is a sequence as I figure out where to put which part in the food container so that they all fit in there. I got there in the end and replaced the lid. I thought it would be a good idea to write on this. So don't mistake it for food and put it in the freezer. It is a Stuart 10H. And in case you're wondering, the H stands for horizontal. A 10V is a vertical engine. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.